In this video, we're going to look at how to uh, sharpen some lathe bits. Uh, these are a couple that I sharpened in advance. Um, there's a lot of different grades of tool bits. These you can see, uh, they're made in China. They're 3 8 in diameter square and 3 inches long. Uh, but there's no cobalt or nothing in those to make them uh, really resistant to high heat. But they do make a 5% uh, cobalt, they make an 8%, 10%, they make a T15, which is about the best, they're $36 a piece. Uh, the M43s, M42s are really good, uh, but the price range is, this is just a typical M2 right here, it's a high speed bit. But when we get into the higher cobalt and the tool steels, like the T15 or the M43, uh, the price really goes up. But what we're going to do, we're gonna, this is a uh, basic roughing tool. And you can see from the front, well, let me pull it up a little closer. You can see the geometry a little bit uh, compared to your book. This is a right hand tool. It's a right hand tool because the cutting edge is on the top left. If you look at it from the front, the cutting edge is on the right. So that's why we call it a right hand tool. It moves from the tail stock to the head stock. Uh, but you can see our clearances every direction. We're going away from the cutting edge. And what we do when we make these here at school, we'll have the students make one like this and then flip it around like that. And then they'll make another one identical, but then they'll put a small radius, about a 30 second radius on the other end, use it for a finishing tool. Okay, but you can see how the geometry is on these. That's about a 10 to 12 inch clearance on, the, on every angle actually. And what I do, I set the tool rest on the grinder at 12 degrees and I'll show you how to do that in a minute because it's you can't go off the center of the shaft because it's it'll it'll be quite different but we want to make sure our grinder is set with about a 16th or less clearance at the spark guard and about a 16th to an eighth at the tool rest make sure wheels are not cracked we spin them around a little bit and see how they feel they look good we just put these on we give them the ring test we tap them with the end of a screwdriver so I'll show you how we're going to uh, make these bits. First, I cut some blanks. This is just common steel here. Now it'll grind a little bit different, but uh, as you make these tools, I want you to practice on some just some square three eighths or square half inch common steel. Okay, that way we're not going to waste a lot of high speed steel. Just in case, just in case it takes a little longer to catch on uh, grinding these. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to set my tool down and you notice how my hand, just like a lot of times like grinding drills, I want my fingers all over this. So my left hand, all it does is hold my hand to the tool rest and my thumb holds the tool down. So my right hand is merely to turn it and to push it. And we do want to quench these quite a bit. They'll get hot on us. And if it's still still, we don't want it to turn blue, that's for sure. So I'm putting about a 10 degree angle on the front. I'm just tilting it this way. And if you need to draw some lines on there, that's fine. About 10 degrees. feels like it's getting a little bit though, I'll just feel free anytime to just dress it just lightly. Some people may even want to put a T on the top of it so you don't get it mixed up as you're making this tool. So what I'm doing now, I'm grinding the uh, end release. If you looked in your textbook, under unit three in the lathe section, you'll see how we grind these. And one more time, and then I'm going to check my angle. All right, that should be good. Let me give it a little, just a little tap. 
Now the way we want to check that angle is I just use a uh, protractor like this and I'm going to bring it up against the front of the tool just like that and that's going to tell me what angle I'm at and it looks like I'm about 10 and a half maybe 11 degrees 90 would be straight up I'm about 79 so I'm about 11 degrees and I'm happy with an 11 degree angle that's fine so let me I'm not going to grind the whole tool for you because we would be on this uh, video for quite some time so what I'm going to do is just show you how to get started grinding these and then we'll kind of go from there so this is the top remember this is how I was grinding one ago but the key thing is to get those hands in place this finger right here this thumb right here that way you're not going to get hurt you're not going to fall into it and the thumb holds it down it's got to stay flat the whole time you don't want your tool rolling around all over the place that's a bad thing okay so let's We'll touch the front up just a little bit more. And when you dip it in the water, it's best to go water, air, water, air. You dip it in and out, in and out, in and out of the water. That way you won't heat the water up. Okay, so I'm happy with the front, okay? So this is my top, remember? Now what I did, I just ground the front end relief angle Plus, I've got this clearance this way, about, about 10 degrees. And now I'm going to grind this angle on the top. I'm not going to give it a back rate. All I'm going to do is bring this, right where I'm grinding it here, I'm going to bring it all the way up until, until it reaches the top. But see what I'm doing now? I'm going to lean my fingers all over the grinder. And then I'm going to put this hand on, on the tool rest. I'm going to put this one over here. Because I want to make sure that my hands are not going to go into that grinder. See, it's just about there. We're bringing it all the way up. It's about a sixteenth away right now. And sometimes it's it's a good idea to slant it back just a hair like that. You'll get a little bit better grind on it. There we go. Let me go just a little bit further. Okay, there we go. Looks looks good there. Now you can see how we have this relief on the top. We used to call it a top uh, relief angle. Uh, we're not going to put a side cutting edge angle on it and we're not going to put a, a back rake on it if we do aluminum non-ferrous metals we can put a back rake where we're going to make a cup shape here but for what we're doing now this is absolutely fine so now i'm going to put an angle on this side remember everywhere from the cutting edge we're going to cut it back just slightly But see how my hands are leaning on the on the grinding wheel guard and on the tool rest. And you can see how we're going to start taking it up. We just started and we want to take it up until it reaches that. But we want the end result to be that 10 degrees this way, 10 degrees this way. 10 degrees this way and 10 degrees that way. All right, we're just about there. I kind of prefer a wheel that's just a little bit more coarse. So it doesn't load up quite as quickly. Okay, we're just about there if you can see just about there and it's getting a little bit hot so we've 
pull it off. And this is not tool steel, remember, this is common steel. So, this is just for practice. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, I do see a little bit of flatness on the nose. But see how the tool bit always stays flat. Always. Always and forever, this thing stays flat. Alright, now here we go. Here's the put a little bit more. Here's our final product. You see on the front we have all of our angles. There's our cutting edge. We want to come away this way, this way. This way, on the top, we're coming off that way and that way. So this tool, there's the cutting edge. It's gonna, it's a, it's a right-hand tool. It's coming from the right, and it's gonna be moving from the tailstock to the headstock, just like that. Now some people may put more angles on them, uh, like 12, 14 degrees, and that's fine. Uh, but this has worked for us. 10 to 12 degrees works absolutely fine. So this is what we would do. Now I would take this bit, and I would turn it over like this and grind the same thing I just did on this end. That way, when I put it in the tool holder, the screws will not hit the cutting edge on the opposite end. When I turn it over, the screws will hit this end. Turn it over, the screws will hit this end. They're not gonna hit on my cutting edge. Uh, let me just show you one more thing. We, uh, for our finishing tool on the other end, it's gonna be the same tool as this, but it's gonna have a little radius on it. So let me show you how to put the radius on it. Just like that. That's all we did on that to get the radius. Now you can see we have a nice little radius on it. You can see it there. Um, just like that. Nice radius on it. All my angles are right. It's only taking about 10 minutes. And that's all I do. I don't put that back rake on there, so don't do that. My end relief angle, all my other angles are uh, uh, 10 to 12 degrees. And that's exactly what we do. So in the next video, I'll show you how to do your lathe tool and your grooving tool. So this is how we would make a finisher and a rougher all in one. Okay. If you have any questions, send me an email or send me a text and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.